Hi, Joe Glavin from City Floor Supply. Um, welcome to our warehouse and our Facebook Live. Uh, today we have some uh, a lineup, a full-fledged lineup here of equipment to uh, demo, talk about, give you the um, technical data on it, all that good stuff. We have American Sanders Epic. 16-inch. Uh, so essentially all four of these are kind of, I call them like hybrid buffers. So they're either, they're well they're all multi-heads, except the Flexi Sand can be both, um, and so can the Epic. So what we have is the Epic, um, which is 16-inch sander. We have the Bona Flexi Sand DCS, and we have the Bona Flexi Sand Power Drive, and we have the Logler Trio. So two 110 volt units and two 220 volt units. Um, again, they're multi-heads. I'll flip them down and show you. Uh, we'll go over the sizes of the discs, RPMs, weights, all of that good stuff. And the plan is to essentially take one travel path with everyone getting a 40 grit uh, Norton Red Heat disc on it, whether that's a five inch disc, a six inch disc, or an eight inch disc for the trio. Um, and just give you an idea of how close it gets to the wall, its aggressiveness, and all of them will be run with um, the intention of trying to get the floor flat. We have a hickory floor that has finish on it, has a couple coats of finish and dark stain on it. Um, it is cupped a little bit, so I'm gonna go with a 40 grit. So they're all gonna have either steel backers on their multi-discs, they're gonna have all their weight on them. Um, so we're gonna run them as if they're sanding a floor that is cupped and you know has some issues. And then we'll see what the cut path looks like. We'll start off, I suppose, with uh, the Epic Sander. And by all means, if you have any questions along the way, just stop me. Uh, I'll be back and forth grabbing sandpaper and um, I will tell you what I'm doing as I put this on there. Uh, so just to highlight that Epic uh, is a 16 inch. Uh, it does have the Hydra sand on it. This is a two speed buffer. So we're gonna run this. Uh, the op One of the features of this being two speed, you can run it like a normal buffer with a normal block, normal drive block um, and the 175 RPM. And then with all the weight on and the hydrosan, which is a six headed disc, um, all five inch discs like that. This is actually the steel plate that we're going to put on, uh, to make it aggressive. And you want to run that on the 300 RPM setting. And there's a switch down here. I'll show that to you. So you can run this again, like a regular buffer in the 175 RPM or so you get kind of two machines in one. Uh, again, that hybrid effect. But we're not going to run the disc, uh, we're going to run the multi head. So it comes with cable, comes with weights, comes with lights. Um, again, the hydro sand, you can get it with or without the hydro sand. And it has some. Uh, Nice non-marking um, balloon style gray wheels and it looks like, I mean all of these have a similar style wheel um, to get us around a floor without marking it, uh, particularly if we're going to pick stuff up off the job site. So, Floor Life Buck says trio for the win, he likes the trio. Alright, well we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. So our cut path on this guy is going to be 16 inches. And I want to say it's supposed to get up to, I guess, an inch from the wall. Somewhere in there, maybe half an inch. I uh, believe the weight on this guy 
with um, all of the weights and the hydro sand, we're around 130 pounds. So for a buffer, you know, that's pretty good. Um, nothing's really going to top the trio. And that puppy's probably coming in at 100 and 170 pounds. You know, somewhere in there, 70 kilos from my... Like the Epic, awesome. So we're gonna put some uh, five inch red heat 40 grit on the Epic. I am gonna run um, just a vacuum that we have back here in our demo area, uh, the Festool vacuum. I won't plug into that, but I'll just turn it on manually. It should be enough just to pick up dust. And then I'll set these guys to float. So, let's see, five inch. Tim Stugram says he likes the weighted power drive with Steelys. We have another vote for the Trio. Nice. I have, uh, I don't think I have weights for the power drive. I think it's just going to run what's on there. And I think that's 130 pounds. Or, I'm sorry, 110 pounds. So we'll see. And again, um, because this is a counter-rotating buffer or a sander, I am going to have to control it, you know, with the handle up and down and then walk it in a straight path so it'll be a little bit. Whereas the power drive with the gear-driven unit and individually spinning um, pads and the trio, I can walk behind them like a sander. Okay. So this has a really nice LED light too. I remember that. Another vote for the power drive. All right. Okay, so you see, obviously, you see the LED light. Um, you saw me put the steel discs on. It's the Hydra Sand multi drive that's on here. Um, here is the switch from low to high. And I believe this motor is a magnetic drive motor, then, because I can control the speed with that rheostat. So let's uh we're at a 10 to 1 on the gearbox so but we're controlling the speed of the buffer so uh 300 plus rpms is what i'll be running this at oh yeah that would help That was, uh, this is 40 grit. 40 grit with the hydrosand. So I had to go to a different outlet. The outlet I had over there is, I know it's weak, and I think it was 15 amp. So I'm in the shop now. It should be at 20. Yeah, there we go. So the hydro sand. this is the hydrosand with uh, 40 grit red heat on it. And I'm going to do the travel path back because I'm going to do the same kind of cut with every one of these. And you can see the cupping, so.
All right, so again, that's, you know, hickory floor. We've got um, some cupping going on here, which you can see I'm highlighting. Um, but where it was cupped, it did take it down to bare wood. So that's a, that's a bonus. I really don't expect all of these machines to take the entire cupped floor down flat. Um, obviously anybody doing this for a living is probably going to put a sander on this floor and get it flat and then go from there. But uh, I think it's, it's just a really good illustration of what kind of aggressiveness we can get from these hybrid style buffers. So um, again, that's the Epic. Um, we have dust collection on this. It is probably an undersized vacuum that I'm running, but um, runs just like a normal buffer. Uh, you can take a look at the multi-head now. There we go. Uh, this is the hydro stand and I do have the steel um, interface pads on. So, and I'll, I'll, I'll take one off and show it to you. Well, maybe not. They're on there pretty good. Yeah, they're on there pretty good, but that's the steel backer pad um, to make it stiff. So when I was running it, I mean, it was grabbing me. It was, it definitely wanted to cut, cut wood. So um, very aggressive, probably do you know, great things on multi-direction floors, herringbones, parquets, uh, that kind of thing, border work, medallions, um, commingling uh, various species. So some softer, some lighter, uh, getting an even flat sand. It's kind of the beauty of all of these actually. Um, so the weight system, I'll give you an idea of kind of how easy it is to Take that on and off. So it's just a clevis pin, and then you can remove each weight as you see fit. Um, just has a non-vibration bumper on each plate. And fairly, uh, fairly easy to get off. Any questions on the uh, Epic, Epoch, Epic? I don't know how you pronounce it. I think it's Epoch. I think it's Epic. But uh, so American Sanders Epic 16 inch. We'll put that one aside and we'll start the um, Flexi Sand. Now, the Flexi Sand has the ability for the multi head and it also a standard um, 16 inch block. So we will. Marcus says better better get a putty knife. He'll never get those off by hand. Yeah, I know. I was about to pull my Leatherman out and I didn't want to. They, they are really hard to come off. I know that. Thank you. Um, we have two questions. Uh-huh. Uh, is Jake Hilbert wants to know, I've noticed with the Epic on the highest setting will trip breakers. Is there a way to solve that? Yeah, you're going to need to be in, um, in a 20 amp breaker. Uh, I know, so, you know, if, if you're in a home, something that's going to be, a refrigerator is going to be plugged into it or, you know, a, an air conditioner that's 110, so like something that's a, a heavier duty breaker, you're, gonna, you're definitely going to need it. Um, I just popped it here. So, and I know for a fact that that's a 15 amp breaker running that outlet. Um, and I know I was pushing it, but I didn't think coming back one down and one up that it would pop, but it did. Um, but it happens. So I ended up going into a 20 amp, uh, outlet in the shop, repair shop. So, um, other than changing out the breaker, I can't really think of anything else. Possibly, uh, the power station. Uh, I think the power station is 20 amps. So if you, maybe if you were running 220 to it, uh, and then running the power station or a volt booster, you might get away without having the 
um, do anything with the breaker. Probably, probably the better option, actually. Um, Tom Rush wants to know, with the Epic, can it just be used for in-between coats? Yes. Yeah, it's, um, you take all the weights off and uh, flip the switch back to 175, and you can run it like a normal buffer. Uh, take the weight on that with all the weight off and the hydro sand off, and a regular block, you're at 105 pounds, somewhere in there. Okay, and then uh, COTU Hardwood Flooring says running off your booster would help. Right, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, okay, so we have got our uh, Flexi Sand DCS with the multi head. Um, it's also six discs, and I believe this one is 150 millimeters, which is going to be about a six inch disc. I gotta go grab 40. Okay. So, uh, again, we can run two discs on this. We can run the Flexi Sand, um, which is the six, the multi head. And then we can also run the straight up uh, disc for bolting paper onto. And that would be, you know, running regular buffer pad screens, that kind of thing. Uh, comes with a wrench, uh, left-handed nut for bolting on paper. Uh, if you want it to run like a hard plate. Um, so suppose the hard plate with these, this kind of equipment is going way of the dodo. But um, so I did want to show you before I flip it back over. Um, this guy, you know, really, um, a really nice design. Uh, the way this is ported in order to get uh, vacuum and dust collection, you know, you can see we have a directional flow that's gonna mimic how we're sanding uh, that's around the gearbox here. Uh, we have a carry handle, which is designed to miss the block when you have it assembled. Um, a large gray wheels, that are non-marking, help us uh, get up the panel, get up the stairs, get up risers, up curbs. Um, and then when I put this back on, you'll see the light. I do have the uh, intermediate face pads on these, which I'm pretty sure is the most aggressive for this system. Um, as far as like the sh dust shroud, dust shroud is uh, is fitted to the chassis, so it snaps in. Um, it also floats. Uh, again, very forward thinking, thoughtful, well designed, and we also have our LED light, which can be moved as we need to. Um, we can plug in our vacuum to this unit as well as the light right here. We have a, an outlet that allows us to plug the vacuum in. Again, if you're uh, concerned with electric, all of that will probably go into a power station. Uh, you may have to split the breaker between the vacuum and uh, the unit itself, the sander. So just be aware of that. Um, I am gonna put this in, this is a, uh, instead of a lever, this is a piston and nice little feature to bring the unit down so that I can um, get it to my proper height. Um, we have these safety interlocks for uh, keeping our handles. We can adjust the angle of this unit up and down. Same handle on the power drive. On the power drive, you can fold it forward and really get an aggressive cutting action. Um, so we're gonna put that vacuum system in there.
So I have no weight on this. And I can tell my dust collection is good. Um, you know, it's sanding is pretty much the way I thought it would. That is um, not as aggressive as the uh, Epic. And again, I didn't expect it to. It's not 300 RPMs. And it's not, um, you know, it's about 30 pounds lighter. So that all, you know, plays a factor. Now, whether or not I'm into like a smoother section of the floor that's less cupped, I don't really think that's the case. I think the pad is floating down in there and getting um, stain and finish off. As far as what it cleared, again, these aren't, um, scientific tests and it's hard to it's hard for you to hear I guess how it's sanding with the vacuum on it but it very much felt um, like a traditional buffer uh, sanding even though I could feel that hop where it was hitting some of the cupping uh, not as aggressively hopping as the Epic did but again, you'd expect that from a unit that has 30 pounds of weight on top of it. So, um, but so in general, yeah, go ahead. You commented here, Epic with Steelys, but not on the DCS. Uh, I did not put the Steels on the DCS. I just used the medium interface pad, um, but I did not put the Steels on it. Uh, just the 40 grit red heat. How do you think that would affect it if we did have them? Um, I, pro I mean, we might get a little bit more cut off of like this particular cup. We, you know, we might have expanded a, a little bit. Would we have matched um, how much we were getting here? Because we're getting fairly flat here. I don't think so. I think that that pad would have floated a little bit. Again, just because we don't have the weight on it. So we we'll use the... Go ahead. A couple comments about the steel plates and how they might make a little bit of a difference. Yeah, oh, there's no doubt. Um, you know, the more stiffness you can get behind that sandpaper, uh, when I flip this trio over, you're going to see the aluminum drive block. You know, I took the interface pad off, and we're going to go direct uh, with the sandpaper to the Velcro on the aluminum um, drive on this, on the sanding disc. And we're also going to do the same with the power drive. So, you know, the steel discs will definitely uh, give you less flex. You know, it's very similar to the old hard plates. You know, they, Clark used to make, or they still do, a 16 by two hard plate that's aluminum backed with a felt face that you would bolt uh, 16 inch sandpaper or 15 inch sandpaper to, had a two inch center hole and, a, you know, a large retaining disc, very similar to what the bone of flexi sand comes with. And there were also aftermarket people that made them in plastic. And the plastic ones would flex. But if you put sandpaper on that aluminum backed hard plate, you know, there was no flex to it. Uh, and that was kind of the go-to for misdirection or any kind of parquet flooring, herring bones and parquet and all that stuff. Same concept, right? We're putting a steel disc underneath here and we're keeping it stiff. So uh, we're gonna, bring the uh, power drive up uh, or I can bring either one up you, you guys want to let me know while I'm disassembling this uh, that's fine if not I'll just pick one the comments from MSCS Inc um, do you think that clocking the buffer 45 degrees to the floor would have made a difference yeah there's um, like the idea I wanted to run this to show how each one was going to run the same way. Like I didn't want to go back and forth like a buffer or um, I didn't find the hot spot of the buffer. Uh, there's a couple NWFA articles out there on 
uh, you know, how to find that hot spot. Sometimes it's on the back right at like five o'clock. Sometimes it's, but these multi heads are supposed to run a little bit more even. So clocking the buffer isn't typical of being needed. However, uh, it's not, I mean, it's not a bad thing. Uh, so running straight down and straight back, the reason I was doing it that way with these buffers that have counter rotation where I needed to balance it was so that I could mimic what's going to happen when I run the trio and the power drive because those run like a sander. Um, they're, they're counter each head uh, so that it runs like a regular sander uh, as opposed to floating clockwise up and down left and right with a regular buffer handle. Luis votes power drive. Power drive? Okay. So the power drive um, is over two horse. Um, it is a 220 unit. Uh, has the same handle features as the um, Flexi Sand and uh, same wheel structure, vacuum, all of that stuff. However, underneath, and we'll, we'll take a look at it, um, and just to save time, I already assembled the power drive itself. Um, uh, somebody wants to do the trio, but power drive, we're doing the power drive next. Yeah, power drive's up. We got to it first. So this is a, uh, comes with a 30 amp cable. What you see here is a pigtail that I have on it. Um, it's just to convert it because all my cords are uh, 20 and I'm only running it, you know, 10 feet. But um, again, same concept. We have this uh, ring gear out here. Um, and should I light it up with my phone? Yeah. So the, uh, this ring gear also then uh, drives each one of these pads. And we get a counter rotation from the pads according to how this whole unit uh, is rotating. And we also get a, you know, an aggressive cut because we're driving from a 10 to 1 gearbox on a 220 motor and we're getting essentially we're transferring all this horsepower from the motor because of this geared system to these pads while we're sanding and then the structure of this you know is um it's pretty thick plated um metal there and it there's no so there's going to be no flex um i'm, I'm anticipating that this is going to sand uh pretty aggressively but we will Soon find out. Again, 220 unit. And I think these are, yeah, these are um, 150 millimeter or um, about six inches. So the uh, power drive and the trio also have multiple um, head attachments. So you can, you can get a wire brush kit for the power drive. It comes with a, its own block assembly. Uh, you can also get wire brush kit for the trio and a carbide head kit for the trio for if you say like they call it a planer head if you wanted to do subfloor prep, um, you know, seams in plywood, uh, subfloor if it was flash patch or um, leveling compound or something that you needed to grind down. So uh, this one is, I think the only attachment that it can come with is the uh, wire brush kit. There's an extra kit that you can get for this. Dave asks, is that the Bona buffer? Yeah, this is the Bona Flexi Sand, um, 
power drive. So this is the 220 unit. The Flexi Sam 110 we just finished with. Um, we're still doing 40 grit, right? We are still doing 40 grit. Um, and also, can we supply our machines in 240 volts, 50 hertz? They are available in 50 hertz for uh, Europe. But what I'm running is 60, 60 hertz. Uh, what paper is that red heat? That, was, uh, that is red heat 40 grit in a 150 millimeter, it's actually five and seven eighths. Can you get a wire brush kit for the epoch? Uh, I don't, I haven't seen one. Uh, um, there might be something in, out aftermarket uh, but I haven't seen it. So, what I was telling you that this unit, you can make this unit fairly aggressive. Um, you can lock this in here. You can run this, push down on it. Um, I know when we were demoing the wire brush kit, I'm sorry. I know when we were demoing the wire brush kit before, uh, you know, we ran it like this. We had a couple schools here, the guys ran it like this. Kind of gives you a little bit more control. You can see a little bit more, you know, what you're doing. Um, again, I, I'm gonna run this up like I would a buffer and let you guys see how it runs with, you know, me operating it with the handle up. But it's a nice feature and it also is a nice feature for storing it in your van. Or trailer or truck. So again, I have a lot more control of this. Um, the way that power drive ring is allowing that to spin, I'm walking it like I would, you know, a regular uh, sander. And again, there's, uh, there's no weight on this. So that was uh, with the intermediate pads on it, and which are, I guess, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're the thinnest pads that, um, that they use. And again, 40 grit, red heat. Um, where were we as far as cupping? Um, there, there is still some on the edge here, and I probably got a little bit of float, you know, coming off of the cup over here and where this edge is high but you know I'm I'm fairly flat I can still feel the seams where the floor is cupped and um, you know I've got a lot of overwood over here so we'll see uh, you know see how the trio does compare it right next to the power drive but you know I've got a lot of stock removal from finish and stain on this in this one path so, um, I think they bill this as being 
three centimeters from the wall, um, which puts you uh, an inch and a quarter, somewhere in there, inch and a, maybe an inch and a half, inch and three eighths. So, you, you know, you're not gonna be sanding without an edger. Uh, you're still gonna have to edge. Um, that's not gonna cover with quarter round. But, uh, did a very nice job. So let's take a look at the pads. Um, again, I really like this piston handle. You know, we're just, it's a really, I like it. So, uh, Tim's Instagram says, I was told the handle should be up higher than waist level when using the power drive. Uh, you're probably not wrong. You know, I didn't, um, yeah, you're, you're, if that was what someone from Bona said, perfect. Do it, definitely do it. Uh, again, you can run this, remember I was saying, with the handle uh, cranked forward. So you can actually run it almost like you're running, um, you know, an upright edger. So, but we have pretty good sanding coverage on all four discs. Um, you know, I'm pretty impressed with the overall profile. Now, don't forget, we've got finish, two coats of, uh, two coats of water-based finish on here and a cup floor, it's hickory, and it's got stain on it. So, uh, 40 grit, you know, it took, all, it took some stock off. I like that. And that was, you know, again, just forward and back and no weight, nothing, uh, nothing crazy. So, uh, we'll do the trio next. Are we going to uh, put intermediate pads on the trio as well? Uh, we're gonna, I can, I mean, I can run it with the, the Felco rings. I'll show them to you. Um, I was trying to make things aggressive and equal across all four as best I could. Again, it's not scientific, but um, I know that this unit sanding, because you still have foam pads, regardless of what the interface pad is gonna be, so we still have some flex there. Uh, and I can do that to the trio. That's not a problem. But I did take it off. And I'll show you what I took off. Essentially, these would be their um, sanding rings or interface rings, I suppose. And they just go on there. Um, but again, since we are doing 40, I figured we'd go right to the most aggressive cut and try and see what kind of stock removal we get. So um, we are, just to go over this again, the 220 unit, um, I believe it is for... 220, yeah, 11 amps. So this is gonna draw 11 amps. Um, the motor's spinning at like 3,600 RPMs, but this platen, which is this triangular piece here, that's spinning these heads. So what we've got here is we have a direct drive motor that has a serpentine belt wrapped around every one of these pads. And that serpentine belt is driven by a pinion gear coming off of this motor head. And so the platen is spinning, which is again, the framework here, this is spinning. And then these pads spin individually because of the serpentine belt. And while we're doing that, we're getting an, you know, a counter, a, essentially a counter for every time this pad is spinning. So it's able to be sanded and walked behind like a regular sander. Um, the dust collection on this is phenomenal. It is uh, self-contained. It has its own vacuum motor, its own vacuum hose um, with its adjustable skirt. So there's no need for hoses. Um, this is all completely self-contained. Uh, it has a pleated filter that uh, you'll, you're gonna wanna clean. I usually do it if I'm changing paper. You know, I just give the, um, the filter a shake and it takes all the fine dust out of the filter and sends it down to the bag. Um, so one last thing, these pads where most of the other ones, I think we topped out with the Epic at 300 RPMs, 
These are 700. So these pads are cutting. Um, and you're going to find that that's probably where a lot of the aggressiveness comes. And let's not discount the weight of the machine. You know, it's 170 pounds. So, um, for my friends in Ireland, it's like 12, 13 stone. That's a pretty heavy machine. Um, again, and we've added weight to it. Uh, I'll show you the weight ring in a minute. But I, I have no problem sanding with both uh, if you want. I could put these interface pads on after I sand with this one. I'll just kind of go across here. You can see you know, the difference in the cut. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to put on... This takes um, an 8-inch disc or I believe um, two, 200 millimeters, I think. Yeah, 200. Yeah. Two, three... So, um, let's move it right there. You should make sure that these guys are tight. This is the assembly. This unit comes apart, two pieces. Um, this is the, the weight. Uh, if it's available, I'm going to use it. So, that's, um, I got 40 grit on here. That's the uh, filter cleaner, and I've also got a switch here. So if you do take this apart, um, you just disconnect the uh, switching mechanism from the top part that's on the vacuum, and uh, slide it right on the front here. And then you'll, you're able to take the sanding head and the vacuum head in two different pieces. All right. Let's fire it up. This is a 20 amp twist lock 220. They do say when to start this, uh, when you do start this, to uh, just take a little bit of the weight off, but not like all the way up in the air like this. So all you want to do is just kind of, so that the pads are still touching just a little bit, and then go ahead and start it up. And you'll hear it get up to speed. Um, Again, it's a self-contained vacuum system. Uh, I think I've got the skirt down where it needs to be, but I can adjust that too. Brand new machine. So I can feel where the machine really wants to cut. I'm getting some vibration. And that's not uncommon with the Trio. Uh, my cut path on this, as opposed to 16 on everything else, is of almost 18 inches. As you can see, the stock removal in the vacuum system here. Dave, 
Pizza seems less even cutting than the Bono, or is it floor more so? I got a lot of cupping on this very end, but that's okay. I'm, um, I'm looking at what I am cutting, and where it has got the board flat, that board is pretty clean. So, a um, couple things, dust collection. Now, again, I ran everything on this unit, which really you should have a, probably a, a more, a higher volume CFM and, um, you know, to, to collect this dust here. But that's pretty darn clean as far as dust collection, you know, what we're seeing from the trio. And uh, that's, I mean, there's, there's hardly any dust on that floor, which is pretty neat. Um, and where I do have significant stock removal, this, this is uh, completely flat. So there's no roll. Like I have just a little bit of roll here. I know it's really hard to see on, on camera, but this is completely flat right here. Um, so, you know, maybe I drop down a grit and I get it in, you know, I get it clean but I do have some here right at the edge where I can feel the uh, cupping. Um, but I am, I am flat where, the, where, where you see clean flooring, hickory, um, it's flat. And I, um, so again, I, 700 RPMs, um, probably 70 pounds heavier and you know, internal dust collection those are all the things that make the trio what it is. You know, it, it is going to get the floor flat. Um, I anticipated that it would do a fairly good job. Now that that power drive did a great job, and I think with dust collection, you know, we would see we would see just a little bit more um, from the floor. But as far as clean stock, you know where the sanders were the most aggressive i would say that uh, epic on the ridges of the cupping got them clean um and so did uh the trio and i say we we got a cleaner wider swath with the power drive but again i just we get so many questions on all four of these units i just thought it would be neat to kind of put them all on the same panel. It's real dark when they got sanded. I knew it was going to be bright hickory. This is actually blue stain hickory. Um, I thought it would look neat, be able to see it. So they're all the same grit, um, best I could do. Uh, any questions, uh, comments? Edward votes for the power drive. Power drive, there you go. All good. Um, yeah, all good. So uh, before I forget, I wanted to remind you guys to keep looking in your uh, email boxes and on our website for holiday specials, which are um, still coming through. And also to remind you of our new pop-up shop in Delaware. Very excited about that. Um, Tax-free shopping for those that are local to us anyway. Um, that can get there. Just give us a call here if you want to do that, and uh, and we'll give you all the details. So Dave says thanks for the education. Dax says I'm using my power drive right now. Luis says great demo. Thanks, guys. You got it. Absolutely. So if you guys have any suggestions, anything that you guys want to see, whether it's equipment or finish or stain or wood or anything that's in our industry um, for this kind of a, a demonstration feel free to let us know uh, and we'll get right back to you. Uh, is Jerry still here? I have a friend who came all the way from Wyoming who's visiting family and has watched us on Facebook and YouTube. So he decided to come here while he was visiting family for the holidays and I'm gonna go get him. Dante, is Jerry there? Hey, Jerry. You want to say hi? Jerry's looking at a vacuum with uh, J 
Jerry's looking at a vacuum with Jim. So Jerry is from Line Creek. Wyoming. Is, why, and it, Wyoming is his uh, home state. And saw us on YouTube, watches the channel, and was coming in to visit family in um, Maryland, Pennsylvania area. And stopped in to say hi, which was really cool. So it's awesome. So if you guys are in the area and you're across the country, you're coming into the East Coast to visit family, by all means, we're open and you get tours of city floor and all the stuff that we do here. So uh, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Thanks for having awesome. me. Awesome. Thanks. And um, again, guys, happy holidays. I hope you guys have a great holiday season. Uh, look forward to the next Facebook Live next year.